I didn't even hit the block that the mushroom was on, I still bounced it. Yes, I could easily grab a star, but... Meh, I just want to cheat the level. Oh, it's also a rising pipe, those are fun. Thank you for the checkpoint. Let's keep going. Here we go in this pipe. Um, secret exit, extremely easy to find. Now, where does the normal exit take us? Look at another feather. I was afraid I was about to grab the star there, but I guess luckily we got another feather. For our reserves. Why? Why do I keep falling down that exact pit? Why doesn't Mario bob up? You can get now. I forgot that the Koopa was actually still in there. Okay, that, these pumpkin enemies, these are what the piranha plants look like now. I love that, I love that redesign, they're just, they're just jack-o'-lanterns now. I kind of wish other Mario games would follow this gimmick, where if you beat the special zen, then all the enemies get redesigned. But yeah. Those circles you back to that level. So it's another level where I have to find the secret exit to advance. Okay, that was an awesome jump. So yeah, extremely easy level when you had the cape. But to play that level normally, you had to ride on those platforms. And it just takes a long time. So... I will gladly cheat that level. There's um, not really much to find there. There's actually no secret exit there. And as you can see, this route is taking us to the Star Road. So, I always thought that was weird. To, like, to find the castle, you had to take a secret exit on a relatively early level in the forest. Like, before you even reach the ghost house. But if you follow the normal road, it will take you to the Star World. Also, oh wow, that track is just neon. These tracks are neon color. That is awesome. I know they did not look like this in the original SNES. I, this is just a pretty little redesign they didn't have to do, but I'm glad they did. Oh boy. So this is actually the first time I found the uh, Star World on my when I was little. Because like... The normal route takes you to the Star World. And not only that, um, I basically had this, the Switch Palaces activated at that time, which means I basically got to Bowser from here. Like, you can essentially skip the last two worlds if you just follow this route, had the Switch Palaces activated, and then you um, take the secret exit in the, the Star Levels. It's like, it's just... And, as a result, um, I thought Bowser wasn't the final boss. Like, I thought I was still following the main road. And, ba and as a result, um, like, Bowser wasn't the final boss. I thought it was just gonna be a, a normal level with an overly fancy castle. So that's just how weird the different routes are in this game. 
Okay, here's a secret area. That I totally fucked up. Okay, we're not taking the secret area. Um, yeah. I think that route just takes you to some one-ups, and it'll circle you back around the, to the, the this room. Like, you'd think it's a secret exit, considering this is the Force of Illusion, but no. So, the, so all the different routes in this game get really confusing, but... I really like it. I really like how all these different routes interconnect and just circle back around to each other. This is also the only path in the game that has a crossroad, and that's why that space is so rit so wide. But since we beat all the other levels, we can do the castle now. So I really like, I really like uh, the Force of Illusion for having all these neat paths. But this level's gimmick is the snake block. Which would, um, come back in some more recent games, like snake blocks were in Mario Galaxy 2. That was their first 3D game, and it was implemented quite well, actually. And there was also that secret star in Galaxy, in Galaxy 2, where he had to follow a faster snake block. That was pretty tricky. Also, that fireball catching. There. Whoa, that was close. So yeah, basically, that's another reason I kind of flew over that level where you had to ride the platforms, because we basically had to do this level, which is um, kind of like an auto level, where you can't really speed it up because you have to stay on this thing. There is a secret down there. I am positive there's actually a secret down there, but I'm too scared to find out. I'm not going to activate that because I'll just make the guy fall. At least now he can get a feather if I don't die. Good. Good. <laughs> really don't need this P-Switch. This is Roy! Roy's our boy! He basically follows the same style as Morton, except the walls will close in. Beyond that, he is just as easy as Morton. There's also a really fun song on YouTube called Not Roy, and uh, I'll explain after this. <laughs> Mario found its way through the Force of Illusion and has put an end to Roy Koopa of Castle 5, onward to the dangerous but tasty Chocolate Island. So some people on YouTube made a song out of the castle theme for this game. It goes like, Yes, it's a castle, but it's not Roy's one. <laughs> and they would sing it in the castle that is Roy's one. And Roy's castle. I don't know how that song was... I don't know how they got the idea for that song, but it is an awesome song. It's just really funny. So now we're in World 6 Chocolate Island. Uh, these are Dino Rhinos. I like these enemies. These are a um, neat looking enemy. that I'm totally going to skip over because I can. Yeah, jump a little higher, buddy. Whoops. So these big rhinos will, uh, well, you can kill them with the spin jump. The small rhinos, um, will shoot fire, either toward the side or above, depending on where you are. The big rhinos, if you jump on them, they'll shrink to a normal rhino. Or you can just kill them instantly with a spin jump. You actually can't eat the big ones, naturally. Okay, we have to go in here. We have to go in this pipe, and then... Ba-bam. Fun little way to beat the level. I'm gonna take this spring eating with me.
And that brings us to the Chucka Ghost House. I like this level. This level, um, has these, uh, floors that... Well, it has these holes that will move around, but these are kind of scary. You gotta watch where you jump. We also have these, um, ghost Lakitus. They're called fishing boos. Basically like the, the fishing Lakitu that was in the forest just now, except he doesn't have a 1-up. He has a flame that will hurt you, so you can't jump too high. It's another unique type of ghost enemy that I appreciate. Of course, he already had to watch where he jumped, considering these uh, holes. <sighs> oh, can't believe I didn't die there. Now we have another type of boo. These are block boos. They will become blocks when you face them. Oh, we also have this... I forgot about this type of boo. This, These boos basically behave like the fireballs that bounce around, except they're long. You know, and so they have lighter hitboxes. But to beat this level, you need to actually bring a... Well... You're supposed to bring a block boo over here to jump on, but we can just as easily use the cake feather. So na 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 na. So this is the only time we actually see the um the ghost Lakitus as well as the block boos. This is also another ghost house that has no secret exit, so that's kind of strange. But I digress. Let's move on to Act Two. This is a weird level. Here are the coins you collect, or the time remaining can change your progress. Can you find the special goal? Yeah! We basically had to, um, do this section in a certain manner that I don't really remember. Because this pipe will change. In fact, if you want to get all the uh, dragon coins, you had to follow a really um, specific route. Shit! Actually, I think we are in the right area. I just kind of fucked up big time. So I just jumped up there and forget forgot about the power-ups. Oh, there's even a hidden block. You don't even need the spring. I was just trying to cheat it. That doesn't even have anything. Survive this section without Yoshi. Oh crap, we're not even in the right section. Yep. Alright, let's see if we can do that again. I like that hitbox is really sensitive. So this is a section. Uh, 
Yes it is, yes it is. Okay, let's just jump over these guys. I can hit you, and I can potentially get a, uh... There's too many guys, I'm not gonna take a chance. But that's how you find the secret exit. Basically, you have to get all the coins along the route and go through as fast as possible. And that'll take us to um, the preview of World 7 again. So, so yeah, there's uh, two preview areas for World 7. This is how all these routes inter interlock to different worlds. It's a really well designed map. Like even in the in every other Mario game, all the all the maps for the respective worlds are just segmented to their own to their own area. Like they don't interlock like Mario Worlds does. Yeah. Here's the section I was thinking of earlier. It's really pointless. All you have to do is just dodge the hammer row. Oh, this is fun. It's just a little fun slide. Can't say no to a fun slide. New Mario U did have a unique world map. Um, it wasn't just segmented worlds, it was um, just a, one big map where all the worlds were located, but I don't think they... I don't really check... But yeah, that's just like a really quick way to the castle. I haven't really checked out New Mario U since I played it, because, you know, new, the new Mario games are boring. Even though New Mario U was the, the best of the boring. <laughs> so, uh... We're gonna avoid grabbing the coins this time, because we don't want to take the secret route again. Because if we go in there, then there's not really a way out. Shouldn't take us back because I didn't grab the coins this time. It totally did. Ugh. It's like if you're speedrunning through this level, you're going to get baited into the secret area, so you have to kind of take your time, I guess. It's kind of weird how this level works. What if I grab all these coins? Because remember, I grabbed those coins and then something different happened. Now we're in a different room. Whoa. Well, that was a mistake. Oh, good. Oh, 
and these Dino Rhinos again. Now I think I'm taking the route that has all the Dragon Coins, so this is pretty convenient. Yeah, you don't really need these when you have the Switch Palaces. Okay, so we got all the Dragon Coins on that route. So that's the trick you do for the Game Boy version. You want to get all the collectibles. And I have another secret route. Yes, I'll cheat. Yes, I will double cheat. Um, let's get some good speed going here. There we go. No cheating! Ha <laughs> Clever. This won't stop me from doing this. Another feather. Alright, they're being really generous with the feathers here. Bye, Yoshi. Okay, so this is kind of like the other level we did where you had to go under the goal. Except this time we don't need Yoshi, we can just fly under it. See, that's what I was confused on how to get under the goal in that other level, because there's no room to fly. I was actually thinking of this level, but in that previous level, you had the Yoshi jump. So, that was the secret exit. Let's see what the normal exit brings us. As soon as we cheat. <laughs> oh yeah, you can also do a little shock wave when you land with the cape. where the ground was. Well, uh, let's get Yoshi back. That was embarrassing. Man, we don't need Yoshi. Puka puka poopa. So that normal exit's kind of a troll, because it was just going to loop you around this little section back to the level. So it's a level where you need to find the secret exit. <laughs> Strange how this late game works. But with that, let's go to a force. I mean, a <laughs> fortress. I like... So this is, um... Obviously it's a chocolate fortress, themed around the chocolate island. We don't want to fall in the boiling... I can't believe it hit there. We don't want to fall in the boiling chocolate, of course. Feathers will help. 
Also, we had these pencils. Yeah, flops are common throughout the Mario games, but I love these little flips, these little mini flops that hop to the side. I feel like we should see them more often. It was cute. That flint was stuck, poor little guy. That was embarrassing. That one can't get us. Neither can that one. Thank you for the cake feather. In the boss store is chocolate. level has a lot of, uh, di diagonality. That's a term. It's a term now. Definitely one of the neater looking underground levels. Oh, also these giant Monty Moles. Uh, they won't, uh, chase you like the, the normal ones do, but that was an easy level. But, um... You can you can stand on them and ride them as platforms. You do have to do that in ROM hacks, definitely. Wow, alright, I've got a perfect game for this level. level. There's a lot of trap spinies that we can set free. <laughs> also fire flower. simple level. And that'll circle us back to the castle. Uh oh. Alright, here's our first level with skewers. Whoa. 
They love to pull tricks with skewers in Mario Maker. Ugh! See, this for Mario Maker, those blocks would stop the skewers from advancing. But this doesn't apply Mario Maker physics. Now, I like these little enemies. These enemies are pretty cute. These are little Sparkies. Um, the most remarkable little Sparky in the Mario series is Watt from Paper Mario. And that made Watt one of the more unique... Um, partners in Paper Mario, because it's a Sparky. And, th and these are very uncommon enemies. The Sparkies are also an item in Smash Bros. So they travel along the, the edge of the stage and basically loop around to attack your foes. Doesn't matter, because there's a free feather. So let's fight Wendy Okupa. Basically follows the same pattern as Lemmy, except um, the pipes are all on a straight path, and these fireballs are a lot easier to dodge just because they're uh, like they have less things to bounce around. You can bas they basically follow the exact same path. Much easier than Lemmy. In every other Mario game, Wendy shoots her iconic rings that bounce around the room. Would have been more special. It's like some of these Koopalings just um, are just different versions of each other. They don't really have their own differing attack patterns. Not all of them. When you Koopa in Castle 6 has sung her last song, which didn't come into play at all, Mario must meet the challenge that is now before him. There is a sunken ship that appears to be a gateway to the Valley of Bowser. So we're not really done with World 6 yet. This is the sunken ghost ship. It's basically an underwater ghost house level. And unlike other ghost houses, we can bring Yoshi with us. Alright, so the Bullet Bills. The Bullet Bills get redesigned as these crows. And they really blend in with the background at this level. So I really like this redesign. This level is actually going to be really tricky with Yoshi, so... So the Boos have a new attack style here. They will... Randomly spawn as so. Ow. Yeah, it's extremely difficult to keep Yoshi. At least Yoshi moves slowly. Like, you kind of have a chance to keep up with him. Ugh, I can't believe I get hit there. Luckily, it seems they stopped for now. But this section is really nice. You get a free star, just fall, and kill. This is also where all the Yoshi coins are, the dragon coins, but I'm not gonna try and... You basically need a cape feather if you hope to grab them. Another star in case you need it. You really shouldn't. Like, you shouldn't have to worry about dying at all once you fall down here. <laughs> and that is a different type of goal that only appears in this level. Because it's a magic orb that opens the secret entrance to the Valley of Bowser. So I just love ominous entrances like that. 
So, time to begin World 7. Yoshi. This is the easiest moon to find in the game. And this room is pointless. should get Yoshi for this level. for a certain reason. So I'm gonna let myself die. We're basically gonna head back to this convenient little level and get Yoshi back. Luckily, we have a checkpoint, so we don't have to go through the rest of the level. Okay. 
crispy. Big black. Now as for the secret exit, um, might be up here. No, that's not it. I'm trying to remember where the secret exit was. We might have to go through this. Okay. So that's one of the reasons I want to get those Yoshi wings, cause this section is pretty tedious. I love it when they just put an easy way out for tedious sections like this. I'm right. I don't really remember where the secret exit was. Like, I could have swore it was in that beginning area, but I didn't see anything that was distinct. I know it's like somewhere on the ceiling, but it was like a secret route on the squished. Having Yoshi in that section is pretty bad. better do this with small Mario. See why I don't like this level, it's just a lot of waiting. Run through here. Should have run through there. It's nice that we have max run time anyway. Whoa! I got smashed. And yeah, he wants to go down and get those coins, not me. Aha! Yeah, that's how you get to the secret. So you did have to go through that. Clever little secret, though. And in case you don't want it, they have a little death pit. And that'll bring us to the Valley Fortress. I have to eat my food. So, 